Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be talking to you about a new jungle path. Not really new, but it's a jungle path that has become a little bit more, uh, I would say, viable because of the changes in the last patch. Now we're going to pause here and I'm going to do a little bit of story like setting or scene setting for why this has suddenly become better than it was before. Before I do that though, thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel. I don't even know if they sponsor the channel anymore. I should probably find that out. Basically, I had a year-long contract. I think the year might be up. I'm not sure. But regardless, because I've been useless in the last few months at actually shouting them out, I'm going to shout them out anyway. They might not be paying me for it, but I'm going to shout them out anyway until I kind of figure out whether I don't need to do that anymore. Regardless, thanks G2A for sponsoring the channel for so long, even though I'm a useless YouTuber. Let's get back to the video. I'm going to be showing you Evelyn. I think Evelyn is one of the most busted junglers on this patch. Not because she got any better. Not because the items that she uses got any better. But mostly because the early jungle pathing that Evelyn likes to do to make her the most viable has got better because of the rift scuttle changes. Do you remember on the, the last patch, the rift scuttle went from 2,000 2, XP to 1,200 XP? So basically they cut like 40% of rift scuttlers uh, experience because of that it has meant that rift scuttler actually as an early objective isn't as important as it was which means you can take it it's still 1200 free experience if you can get it uh, but you are as a, as a level five jungler specifically like a jungler that really needs level five to be good and evelyn is a jungler that really needs level five to be good as a level 5 jungler, you can actually do a full clear, a really efficient full clear, and get level 5 without ever actually having touched the River Scuttler. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to be starting off with Evelyn. We start at the Krugs. So we start at the Krugs here, and I'll show you on the map. We start here, we go Red Buff, and we use a Smite. Um, you can use two times Smites on Red Buff as well. Uh, we go here, and if you haven't used two Smites on the Red Buff, you can use a Smite here. We go here, we go here, we Smite the Blue Buff, we go Grump. Okay? So, tick equals smite. This may look like you've got four smites, but I just want to make it clear. If you, you can smite the red buff twice, or you can smite the red buff once, and then smite the, the, wraith, uh, the, the razor beaks once, then you also smite the blue buff. And then, if your jungle uh, scuttler is still up, you can go to your scuttle. Okay? So that's the, that is the jungle clear for Evelyn. Um, I ward here because this just prevents invades coming in through here through here and because you're starting krugs you'll be able to see invades that come through here as well um but obviously it's a very defensive ward you can obviously put, put more aggressive wards if you, you know i usually like to put a ward on the enemy blue buff because it gets some vision if you're playing versus an evelyn i would thoroughly recommend that you ward her razor beat camp and you try and get a ward on her blue buff mostly because it will tell you exactly where she is the best information that you can have versus evelyn is warding her jungle because she doesn't go invisible she can't be invisible when she's clearing jungle camps so the best information you can get for warding against evelyn is warding her jungle camps because at least you kind of know where she is on the map there is no point once evelyn is level five warding anywhere around your lanes because she just walks straight through them so the best information you can ever get versus an evelyn is just warding in her jungle because it will tell you where she is Shouldn't tell you that as a bit of an Evelyn abuser right now, but it's always good to have the counter information. Right, so I'm going to speed up the early jungle clear because there isn't much to talk about. I've kind of walked you through it, but we go Krugs. Pretty easy to do. We go, we smite our red buff twice here. We do razor beaks. We do uh, wolves. We do blue, which gets us pretty much level five and boom. Right, so... Two minutes into the game, obviously a little bit before that because I just cleared the grump. We are level five, which is a tick. You can kind of see that the Xin Zhao is level five. I'm going to have a quick look at what the Xin Zhao has cleared. The Xin Zhao, I think, has got... Has he, oh, he's got a kill. So Xin Zhao actually got the, the level five from the kill. Um, he did a very standard jungle clear, which was uh, red buff, razor beaks, blue... Uh, and then his river scuttle, but, but he got the kill, which gave him a load of experience for the um, and the assist. So he's got a kill and an assist, which has given him loads of experience to get to level five. Uh, obviously, I didn't have the luxury of getting that. Jin Zhao is a jungle that can definitely gank early. Evelyn kind of needs level five to be good in that sense. But nonetheless, if you look at my experience, 
I am like I'm probably ever so slightly ahead or if not just just about equal and I have just done a full jungle clear um Jin's still got three jungle camps up at this point but you know I can obviously go towards his Krugs if I really wanted to don't know why I said Krugs like that don't don't flame me I'm gonna quickly actually change the um, vision so you can't see Jin's, Jin's vision kind of want to treat this as if you know you're watching it from my perspective right so we're level five now and that means now we, we we now have our ultimate. You can see I attempted. I got. I basically flashed into into her route, which is a bit dumb. Uh, you can see Jin burns his ultimate just to try and stop uh, anybody from going in. But I use my ultimate burning down, and actually that gets Jinx the kill. And honestly, even though it's really good to snowball as Evelyn, getting Jinx kills is obviously really good too. And I can now actually go for my own um, River Scuttler at this point as well. So they did go for the River Scuttler, which means that I can now do this. And I have a smite available should I want it. can smite this down and then go and either gank top, which you see me doing now, having a look towards the, um, the Misfortune. Can't quite do anything. So what I'm going to do is going to straight into the enemy jungle. Obviously, the Soraka would have seen that I was nearby because she had the little... Um, a little uh thing above her head but i'm going to just clear this jungle camp out i've got a lot of support so the reason that i'm doing this is i've got so much support here but even if a fight broke out around the krugs i know that i've got plenty of people nearby to kind of make uh this in, like sort of a viable decision and by the time that i'm now done here all of my red side jungle has already respawned now i have options uh the option that i could have done was back pick up some items and go for a red side jungle clear but as you can see here the misfortune and the um soraka had kind of overextended i didn't quite have the time to get the charm off because the galio kind of went straight in and i kind of wanted to get the damage off i was hoping to burst the misfortune down but because i didn't have my ultimate wasn't able to finish her off lucky that we lucky that we backed out when we did because obviously the zin is here and he was going to be able to counter gank in this scenario. Probably went for his Krugs and then found that they were gone. Kind of went straight for the counter gank. But you can kind of start to see that my experience is just about getting ahead of Zin at this point. So because Dragon is spawning, I really need to back. Like, I haven't backed yet. So this is a really, really important thing. I haven't yet backed, which is really bad. Um, and I essentially just need to find some time to head back to base. You can see the Galio here. He gets taken out by like he used his ultimate as well but zin used his ultimate so in this scenario really big lesson for you guys big neutral objective is spawning and you have one kill on the map your baron laner your enemy baron laner is down here right so you're not even you don't even have a massive number advantage and i wouldn't say that with zin and misfortune you've got a really quick jungle uh, a really quick clear anyway i'm gonna have a look where she is so misfortune is not even with you so you've got Right now, you've got the dragon spawning, you've got Soraka and Zin, who are going to try and take this by themselves, right? So the rest of your team are not in position to burst this dragon down. This dragon is not going to go down really quickly. You don't have Soraka ultimate, you don't have Misfortune ultimate, you don't have Zin ultimate, you don't have Oriana ultimate. You don't have any of your ultimates. Little poll in the comments. Is it a good idea to try and take dragon in this scenario? Yes, no. Those of you that voted no would be correct. I'll quickly speed up me just going back to base. I pick up two needlessly large rods for the um, for the, the Rabbidon's death cap. By the time that everyone actually gets here, we're already there and ready. We have a flash in from the Jinx. I walk in and I smite the dragon away. We kill the Zin and watch this over the wall. And we take out pretty much their entire team. The only one to survive is the Oriana who keeps her flash. So we pretty much kill everyone there because again... They didn't really have the speed to take the dragon down based on where their team was. And at the same time, it looks like the um, the Darius and the Irelia end up taking up the first tower of the game. The set, who has been giga fed by the Darius, who is now 0-2, basically goes like toe-to-toe, -to -toe, gets a healing from Soraka and gets a double kill. So essentially, he, he 2v1s under the tower. At the same time, we couldn't quite get the tower on the top side of the map because both Soraka and the um, Misfortune respawn. This is all a bit mental. Usually, I would have backed way earlier than this. And there's something about this I think is really important to know as a jungler is that your item spikes really do matter. So I could have backed way earlier than I did in this scenario. And then that would have allowed me to uh, more aggressively um, position around the dragon, right? Or even be maybe more useful in that fight where the Galio ended up getting killed. I was a little greedy and didn't back until the very last moment because I kept trying to do things on the map. So just remember that you have to fit your back timings in there somewhere. 
Now, I stayed on the top side of the map here, mostly because, uh, as you saw around the Rift Herald, I wasn't going to get onto that side of the map to contest. And obviously, we had already lost our Darius and our Aurelia. And then this Misfortune and this, uh, this Soraka just overextended, thinking that we'd backed following the Dragon Fight, thought they could get their own tower, given that we were all quite low. But obviously, with Evelyn, she can kind of regen a lot of HP in the with her passive. And Jinx made her way back to the tower pretty quickly. So that resulted in a really, really good double kill for us because we just punished the overextension. Um, you can see here as well with the red buff being up. I was thinking I was thinking that maybe go for the red buff, but uh, because the mid lane was getting pushed, so you watch this mid lane getting pushed here, the obvious rotation for these guys is going to be through the jungle. And obviously, I couldn't quite get the red buff in that scenario. I wasn't going to go 2v1 having got... I mean, I've got 2,600 gold. I wasn't going to go 2v1 versus a Soraka and a Misfortune to try and just take a red buff in this scenario. But that gives me Rabadon's Death Cap, and it gives me a load of items towards, uh, like, my next set. Like, I've now got Aether Wisp, which gives me some movement speed. I've now picked up Ionian Boots of Lucidity. And that's going to get me towards... I'm pretty close towards Lich Bane at this point, and I'm very close towards my uh, Protovote Enchant. The Protovote Enchant is actually really important because that's a really good combo for Evelyn, right? What Evelyn likes to do is pop her charm, Protobelt to proc the charm, so the damage from Protobelt can proc the charm, and then you jump in with your third ability to get a um, a Lich Bane proc, and then you use your ultimate to find the finish, right? That's in like a, that's called the, like the Evelyn late game burst combo, right? We put the charm on Oriana. You'll find a lot of players do this. Put the charm on Oriana. We saw another overextension, and she just flashes. So you'll, you'll find that when you put the charm on someone, they might end up just flashing because they basically they, they simply just don't think they're going to escape so therefore flashing before the charm even procs is a good thing for them misfortune just randomly overextended i think she could have taken the tower and got out but she decided to stay for one more wave which then allowed me to do this and set up nicely you can also see the uh oriana here i don't have time to put the charm on so i just try and try and, get, and pick her off but the soraka ends up turning up i flash and then i thought i was I, for some reason i thought i was going to get hit by sets uh face breaker or was it a haymaker or whatever it is face breaker i think uh, and I thought that that was going to kill me, so I decided to use my ultimate to get out of it. Had I saved it, I could have picked up a relatively easy double kill there, but I didn't save it because I thought I was going to die. But nonetheless, I, I come back into the fight and I help get another couple of kills from our Jinx. You'll notice that I've been funneling a lot of gold into our Jinx this game. One of the skills as a jungler is understanding where to put your resources. Like, am I going to put my resources into the 1 and 5 Darius that is legit running it down? Or am I going to put my resources into a Jinx that has been absolutely, like, just just ridiculously fed at this point like what what's the best course of action do you think right so one of the one of the jungle one of the sort of the tips i have for jungling is just understand where your uh is that gonna be a, that's a nice oh that's a really nice rocket i actually missed that i thought these guys were doomed when they were in the middle of this in the game but that rocket was absolutely insane i mean obviously they die but that was a, such an insane rocket from the jinx right there Ooh, set that's a really nice um Drop. I jump in. Soraka is basically dead. Set is like really buying time here. God damn, Set plus Soraka is insane. I don't have my ultimate either. Yeah, I don't have my ultimate there, but again, it's another kill for the Jinx, which is not too bad. Have to be a little careful because you can see the Xin Zhao has turned up. Is he going to go straight for Dragon? I don't know what he was thinking at this point. I, if I were him, I would, you know, I would have been thinking going straight for Dragon. Oh, he flashes on the Jinx. Okay, yeah, this Jinx is dead, right? This Jinx is turbo dead. That was a really nice flash by him. So, he's going to go for the Scuttle. He doesn't have the support to go for the Dragon straight away because, again, they don't have a particularly quick Dragon take. And they don't feel confident enough to go for the Infernal. So, we kind of get away with that, I think. I think they could have maybe set up for Infernal quicker. But, nonetheless, I've picked up my Protoboat Enchant now. So, that's going to allow me to go for single target burst a little bit more effectively. Zin decides to go for the Infernal by himself. So Zin decides to go for the Infernal by himself here, which wasn't the ideal play. Um, he has got the Soraka supporting, and I can see that. Soraka over the wall. I, I use my ultimate to get back onto the Soraka. Can't quite find the kill, unfortunately. That's a little bit sad. Um, in the meantime, Darius has not left his lane all game. Actually, have you guys seen Darius in any of the teamfights ever, or has he just been walking down his lane hitting towers? I feel like he's he, this this Darius played like a bot. Like, he just, he just sat there trying to take towers like look at him right here he doesn't even care he's just like oh it's only a soraka i'll get some plates it's fine i think he might die to the soraka oh no goes for it come on, mate get the stacks get the stacks get the stacks just dunk 
Man, that was the that was the weirdest thing ever. Okay, so in the meantime, we have the set on the Oriana trying to go for the Infernal Drake. And just watch this, right? Might <laughs> like they thought they were gonna do it without a jungler, and I was like, nope. See you later. Uh, and Zin does try and catch up with me here, but yeah, at the end of the day, that was um a little bit of a, a questionable decision to do that without your jungler. You should never really start major objectives without your jungler. Because if the enemy jungler is alive, they can just walk in and smite. And, you know, there are very few people in the game that can out-smite junglers with abilities. And right now, especially at this stage in the game, you're never going to out-smite an Evelyn with Lich Bane, Rabadons, plus her smite. Like, she's just got too much burst. So, that was just a bit of an awkward decision. I basically am pushing this wave up a little bit here. I know that I've got a massive team fight going on in the mid lane, but frankly... Uh, I'm probably not going to do a huge amount to solve this given how low HP our, our allies are. So I just thought the better thing for me to do is try and deal with that wave on the side lane to make sure it doesn't cause us a nuisance later into the game. Anyway, one of the things I was talking about, one of the lessons as a jungler is just understanding um, like where to put your resources, right? Just understand like for me, this game, it was clear that the worst players on the enemy team were the... Uh, misfortune and the um uh soraka because they're just the way they were playing the lane they were massively overextending and the best players on the team were the oriana and the the set and my my darius was the worst player on my team so there was no way that I was going to camp darius's lane and even if this i mean i have my chat turned off but even if this darius was crying jungler no gank no jungler no gank there was no way that i was going to spend time trying to, to trying to um alter that because at the end of the day the darius is not worth putting any effort into because he's just going to run it down anyway whereas i know that from where the way this jinx is played this jinx is going to be carrying the game so that's why i spent most of my time on the top side of the map because i just knew that if we if we got ganks and we got situations like look at this darius like th that's why i didn't spend any time on that side of the map there was just no point it, it, it would not have won our team the game whereas this, you know this jinx we're not even winning the game, by the way. Right now, we're kind of losing the game, even though we're ahead in gold. But this Jinx is someone that is much more likely to end up giving us uh, a positive outcome. Now, you can see the, the set here essentially goes all in on the Jinx. Nothing that he can really do about it. I dodged the, the face breaker there, and I end up dying to the set. So, I mean, this set is just so super strong. I know that... Um, you know, the, 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 the reflection on this might be, well, if you spent more time in the Darius's lane, then the set wouldn't be this strong. But realistically it kind of is what it is now they i think they could have very easily won the game here if they pushed through sets lane i'm not really sure why they didn't you can see that's two inhibitor towers that they take that is a massive win for them but they don't actually end up winning the game in the meantime though they kind of overextend a little bit the uh the zin is there as you can see almost dead don't bother using our ultimate yet oh, i think i've already used it but it's a triple kill for the jinx which is insane and obviously the immediate thing to do in this scenario is to go for the uh the baron you can see oriana just a bit overextended i kind of tried to i thought that she was going to try and burst me with dissonance so i kind of flashed over it and now this is like a good enough time to just kind of straight go for, for baron that is a massive turnaround by the way i i actually think the enemy team might have been able to finish it would have been close the obviously there was still that kind of backdoor protection on the nexus so it might have been close but it, it, it probably was worth the risk. If they just pushed through one lane and tried to win that way, I think there was a, a good chance that the enemy team could have ended up winning. You can see here that I'm just being a bit cautious because I was almost dying to Baron. Don't quite smite it. I smited it a little bit too early, but you know, regardless, we ended up getting Baron, which is nice. And it's got Baron on every single member of our team. And we can also now see that the, the dragon's up. So that's going to be our next target. We have a really, really strong Jinx at this point who has got a uh, Vampire Scepter now. So going to be able to get some uh, life steal in this in these fights and these two are still i mean I, I don't i don't even know what these two are doing if i'm honest with you maybe they are okay never mind the aurelia is kind of really turbo smurfing late game double kill for misfortune but the aurelia kind of smurfed that you can see the set here i, I mean i have to use my ultimate just to be able to escape him dodge out from the the very edge of the face breaker damage there this set is like super super strong but i guarantee you guys if i put resources that was a great snipe from the jinx if i put resources in this uh darius we would have lost the game even harder there would have just been no point in this darius was never rotating never joining fights sat in the side lane can't even play the side lane properly it wouldn't it would not have been worth it to spend any time in that lane but what is what it is giving us the chance of winning the game is this galio and this jinx who have been playing really really well 
you can see here just trying to get close enough to get a proc because she turned around for a basic attack she got hit by a hate spike which gave us the proc on the uh, charm and as you can now see we've got a pretty sizable advantage walking down this mid lane zin actually finds a pick on but the there was a really nice proto belt i don't know why i used my ultimate though. that was the dumbest ultimate that i used all game but no, nonetheless it was a really really great proto belt by jinx which has now given her like the resets and you can see that's like enough now with just Soraka surviving. That's enough now for us to kind of just go straight in and push down the uh, the Nexus. You can see Set. He's not going to do much in this scenario. I know he's going to try and 1v5. It was the correct play to go for it. I think he meant to ult the Jinx. Ended up ulting me. We end up getting the get, end up getting the win. And this is a game where it. This is not an easy win, man. This is not an easy win. Victory. This was a really tough game. Um, Jinx obviously like did crazy good damage uh 43k but we spent i mean look at my i had a one and nine darius and an eight and even though the irelia made some good like good plays here and there she was a little bit more of a liability most of the time but really great performance from and i think i quite like the um hextech mega drive on um support galio really great performance from the galio really great performance in the jinx and then uh obviously i had like a a pretty solid game as well not the best game but a pretty solid game but i think i just wanted to show you the the impact of of kind of like how full level five clear jungles now can get you into a really good spot and i think uh it's a good way to play the game so things like Jax and even shivana to an extent she's a little better than she was because of the way these jungle changes have happened that the jungle is in a, in a better spot right now for these things and that's good right there we go all done for you guys see you soon